Hey y'all, Trekking Lady. Thank you for coming back for episode eight. I had to change up my camera view. I didn't like the last one, but we're gonna just roll with it. Lady in the street, diva in the seat. She's a trucking lady. Trucking lady. Also, um, if you're interested, if I've inspired you to be become a driver or come to Prime, please. Uh, contact primeinc.com uh, to, to uh, fill out application or call a recruiter and uh, give them my driver referral code ALLSIA it does help with um, quicker processing because I referred you um, if you have any questions I have a TikTok trucking lady I go live on there have lots of fun over there um, and I have an Instagram a trucking lady podcast or just a trucking lady so you can hit me up on those socials and uh, subscribe to my podcast. It's on Google, it's on Apple, Amazon, uh, pretty much any major podcast platform. Or you can sus subscribe right here to YouTube. To, uh, make sure you click that notification bell and subscribe so you can get notifications when I have new content that uploads. So, But now I'm going to get into the last episode we talked about me taking the test who and I passed the test it wasn't easy but I did pass the test now we're going to talk more about the um, of getting my I got my license I got my prime card so now it's time to go on the road okay so get my license like in in the card and every stuff like pretty much the same next day if not the same day can't remember it was a long time ago so finally we go to the next day after I got everything, I'm hired on and everything, time to pick up a load, a load going to California. So when I was in PSD, we didn't really have long loads like that going like from east to west. So we were going to California from Springfield. So we picked up the load and we're driving, you know, we got to take 44 down to 40 like that, you know, in uh, Oklahoma City is where it switches over. We're getting to 40 and this is longer driving, longer shifts of driving because we have to go like 1500 1600 miles in like two days a day and a half something like that so I'm driving close to 500 miles in my shift and as we get into California actually as we're in Arizona we're outside of right outside of Kingman and I start experiencing issues with the truck and the truck actually was not letting me shift past six gear six and I'm on the highway trying to you know get up there because I had just got on the highway I think I had just came from taking a break or going to the restroom or something and it would not let me shift and I'm trying to sit there and tell my trainer hey the truck's not shifting whatever he's like no just you just got to put your muscle into it you just got you're not doing it hard enough you know and I'm sitting there telling him, like no I'm doing it as hard as I can so um we end up he's like okay there's a petrol that's like 40 miles away in Kingman let's go ahead and just pull over there have them look at it they look at it and they say oh it's it's fine you know it should be okay so i was like okay so we're driving and it's still not letting me shift and it really didn't matter too much because we we're going up and down hills and we were heavy so i really didn't need to get out of sixth gear but we were going up we got up this one hill once we got into california and it was really you know steady it wasn't steep but it was a steady climb and I was like, I can't get past fifth now. Like, I'm putting a splitter up. I can't get into six. Like, it just kept knocking out. And it just would not, it would not go into six. So he didn't believe me. He was like, no, it is nothing. It's, it, it, some, you're doing something. You're, you're not doing something right. So he's like, okay, pull over. We pulled over to, like, a little area. We swapped out. So he tries to get up another hill. It's giving him the same issue. Same issue. So I was like, see, I did know what I was talking about. So long story short. We get up the hill um, and we pull over to like this oasis, like gas station truck stop thing in the middle of the night. Of course, we got to call road, road assist. And it, mind you, this is my first load as a TNT, I mean trainer and trainee. And so now we're having this truck issue. So road assist says, okay, tow truck will be there first thing in the morning. You know, we'll let you know ETA. So uh, we end up going to sleep because it was like probably like, 9 10 11 o'clock at night it was dark um and they said the first the close, closest place cl closest freight liner was in las vegas so i was like oh okay get to go to las vegas so we get to go to las vegas but first we got to get there we are about 400 miles away maybe 350 miles away 
So we had to get the tow truck. Tow truck comes and tows us. Uh, that was interesting because you're. I'm in a tow truck that's pulling a tractor that's pull, that has a trailer. So that's a long combination. That was a long, long, long drive. He finally um, gets to Las Vegas. We get to the Freightliner. Mind you, I think it was like a Thursday or a Friday. I want to say it was a Friday. And they said, well, we won't be able to diagnose it. We got there, you know, maybe mid-afternoon, early evening, maybe like three, four. Between 12 and 4, we got it there. And they were like, we're not going to be able to diagnose it, so you're going to have to drop your trailer, leave your bills, you know, for the driver to pick up, blase, blase. They say that they'll let us know on Saturday what the problem is. Okay, so, of course, that means we got to get a hotel. So we get a hotel, and I didn't have a problem getting a hotel room. Um, they, you know, of course, my fleet manager asked, and my trainer asked if I mind sharing a room, uh, as long as it had two separate beds. I didn't care. We sleep in the same truck, so it didn't really matter. So we're in Vegas, you know, I'm sitting there like, they're like, oh, man, I'm in training. I can't, like, enjoy myself. I don't really have money like that, you know, because when you're in PSD, you're not getting paid because you're not technically an employee. You're learning, you're trying to learn the skills you need to pass your test to become a CDL holder. So I didn't get a chance to really have any money because it was on my first week out. So my trainer's like, whatever, you know, whatever you want, whatever you need, just let me know. I can cover you, whatever. And I'm still sitting there like, oh, I don't know if this is a setup. You know, we in Vegas for our first load breakdown okay and he of course he was happy he, you know he's a professional uh sports better and stuff like that he knows how to play table games very well so i was like a little still uh standoffish to the idea of the fact that i'm you know in vegas but i've been there before so it wasn't like i it was new to me so we were staying at the hotel i was i was trying to do some table betting but i was also still in a sense, overwhelmed about what just happened. Like, we had a breakdown. You got to contact road assist. You got to, you know, schedule with another driver to make sure they get the bills and all that stuff. So, first night, I enjoy myself at a restaurant. And then I just kind of go in the room and relax. In the morning, we call the Freightliner. Freightliner says, yeah, we won't know until Monday. We didn't get a chance to diagnose it today. And they're closed on Sundays. So, we knew we were there at least until Monday. So Monday comes, and they still don't know what the problem is. They're running tests. They say, we'll let you know by the end of the day. So by the end of the day comes, and they say, oh, I can't remember exactly what the problem was, but they're like, it's going to take about six days to fix this. So my trainer was like, you know, communicating with the fleet manager, basically saying, hey, we need to get a loaner, you know, closest place was Salt Lake City, straight up 15, um, to get a uh, loaner truck. So we had to go to Salt Lake. He rented a car. We got up to Salt Lake, got a loaner truck, ended up doing some runs. I think we, we were down for like a week before his truck got ready. So we go, they call us, they drop the truck off in, in, in Salt Lake, take a rental back down the day before we go pick up the truck, stay in another room. Then we... You're on with the trucking lady here. And that means you're listening to me through YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Music, wherever you get your podcasts from. In my podcast, I've shared so far my experiences as a trucker coming into this industry and I have so much more to share. But if I have inspired you to take that leap to become a truck driver yourself, I want you to join me here at Prime. Here, you will get your training, your experience, knowledge, and expertise from some of the greatest drivers out there on the road, not to mention the safest. If you don't believe me, you can look up primeinc.com. Contact a recruiter at 1-877-491-1108. Give them my driver referral code a-L-L-S-I-A. We hope to see you rolling next to us on the road. Get to picking up the truck. We're bobtailing down to Phoenix to pick up a load. We had just picked up the load. Literally just picked up the load. Go to the fuel aisle. Go get fuel. 
truck having more problems. Mind you, we're in Phoenix now. And it was like early morning. Truck is, it won't, it won't stop or start. It, like, it, it would not get out the fuel aisle. So luckily we were able to limp it over there. Um, tow truck had to come get us. Luckily there was a freight liner down the street. And they were able to diagnose it with something with the fuel injectors, but they said they can fix it that day. So there was a little shopping mall up the road. So I walked up the road to get some clothes. I was just like, eh. You know, what am I going to do? I had one little bit of money in Vegas. So I was like, eh, I'm going to go get some clothes. Came back. Truck was ready. We got on the re- on the way. I go into that to say, um, being out here in the trucking world is very unexpected. Um, did not expect my trainer's truck to break down on our first load out as a TNT truck. Um, but it did. Um, sometimes you have to have contingency plans or, you know, plan for the unexpected. Uh, that's this job in general you have to really be planning for the unexpected and be ready for pretty much anything and um, so that that prepared me for when I got my own truck and had my first breakdown but I'll get into that later on so as TNT goes on that was a whole nother experience because you're technically a team truck so the trainers up with you for most some sometimes not most of the shift but they're up with you, making sure you're getting on and off the highway safely, getting in and out of truck stops safely. If you have any questions, they're up. But most times they're in the back sleep and you're driving. Then it's time to swap out. So I come back here and go to sleep and he drives his like nine and a half hours, nine, nine and a half hours. And I'm back here asleep. I've been used to sleeping in a moving vehicle, but not like laying down in a bed, you know, pillow, blanket, you know, stop and go bumps, horns, you know, Track road noise, road you know, road sounds, all that stuff. Stop and go. So that was an adjustment all in itself, like to to get used to that, to um, do that, it, and it you lose tra- track of time, especially coming out here brand new. I lost track of time so easily, and it was kind of frustrating because it was like, why can't I keep? Why, why am I losing track of time? Why can't I keep up with, you know, my days? It's just because the days just roll into the next. You know, you're waking up, you're showering, and, you, you know, you might be your shift or you might be showering and you're going to sleep, and then you're, you're you know, you're sleeping for 10 hours and it's getting up in time for you to drive your shift and then, you know, vice versa. And it just constantly goes like that as a team truck. And you don't know, you, you fall asleep in one place and you wake up 500 miles somewhere, 500 miles or so down the road somewhere else. So it's kind of bewildering, you know, um, especially when you're going through, you can hit two time zones in one shift, like in one day. Um, of course, you know, I know a lot of people get on planes and do that, but it's a little different when you're in a vehicle. So, and you're getting up to go to work and you know, you, you went to sleep and you were in Pacific and you're waking up and you're in, uh, you're in mountain time. So, you know, that could be, and then when you're driving, you're driving into central or whatever. Um, especially going from West to East, that was hard losing hours that quickly i love gaining the hours but losing hours was not so much fun uh, so that was the big adjustment was trying to sl- trying to drive and then go right to sleep to wake up to drive for my next shift um it went by pretty quickly we did run into some snow sometimes because I, w- I came in like i said in october so i was in for the uh, winter months um, but i got a chance to get some winter experience but we had to have to shut down a couple times because of snow Um, we went over some crazy passes and I was, there was this one time I was, it was snowing and I'll never forget it was snowing. It wasn't like heavy, heavy, but it was enough to where it was a light covering over the the road, but it was enough to where I had to slow down. And I remember seeing this car coming in the left lane, just like, just beaming it down the road. Like it was no snow. And I was like, Hmm, that don't look good. So and my, my trainer's in the back sleep. So I get up about five miles and I see like a poof of smoke, like a, not smoke, but like blown snow. And I'm like, it's not windy. So why is that snow like just in the air like that? And it almost looked like fog, but it was just like that one little area. So I wake up, my trainer's like, hey, I think we're coming in the fog. Because anytime the weather conditions were changing, I was letting him know. So he, he opened up the curtain and he was like, what's going on? And I was like, wait, 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 it's not fog. Oh, it's an accident. That same car ended up hitting somebody, and I was coming up on all kinds of debris on the road. So <laughs> my inexperience, I did not downshift. I strictly would put that thing in neutral and then just hit the clutch and brake at the same time uh, just to make sure I didn't stall out. 
Even though it was in neutral, I could have hit the brake without hitting the clutch. But that I was a newbie, you know, I was I was still learning stuff. So um, I basically went from like <laughs> gear six all the way down to one without downshifting at all. My trainer just looked at me and was like, so you just not going to downshift? I was like, no, nah, I had to stop real quickly. I couldn't think that fast. Like my mind literally went like to a blur, but I still came to a safe stop. I didn't slam on the brakes. I didn't slide. I didn't hit nothing, but there was debris in the road. I didn't want to run over that. And I mean debris, like it was like engine parts, nails, uh, stuff, just a lot of stuff. So needless to say, we got, um, got going again. It was a area called cabbage pass and off of I 84 in Oregon truckers. You already know what I'm talking about. And it was um it was rather interesting going down that pass because um luckily it wasn't closed but it was about to be we had to get on the other side of pendleton which was um pendleton oregon there's a casino on the other end of cabbage pass if you're going west so we ended up shutting down there because it was the roads were pretty bad keep going further once you come down cabbage pass and you hit the casino but still going further west it was still pretty bad so we decided to shut down there we stayed down there for, I think we were shut down for like 10 or 12 hours. And then he got up and he drove. So, um, I'll definitely say driving in the winter gave me a lot more experience than driving in, you know, the spring, summer, fall time. Cause I got a chance to learn how to drive mountain passes in inclement weather. One thing my trainer always told me, if you have to put chains on, you don't need to be driving. So I didn't learn how to put chains on until I got on my own, but I'll go into that more later. So um but yeah so tnt that was thirty thousand miles i had to do before i got on my own truck and we worked through the holidays and everything like that so it comes to the time where i'm coming up to my last few miles a few thousand miles and he's like so do you want to stay on the truck or do you want to get your own i'll pay you this amount of money you know a little bit more than what i was getting i think i was guaranteed at like 600 a week he's i'll give you a thousand a week to stay on the truck you know and you can go upgrade but you can come back on a truck you know as an ac because i think as i was a bc at the time so i was like no nah, i'm ready to get my own truck i really was i was ready for my own space um because it was you know being thrown into something like that was new you know you're in a small compacted place looking back now i wish i would have maybe would have stayed on his truck a little longer at least throughout the rest of the winter instead of upgrading and getting in my truck in january and maybe stayed on to his truck until March. But, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and you learn. And uh, so that was my experience with TNT. So when I come back in July, I will definitely fifth, like give give you more of my experience as I'm getting my, my feet wet as a truck driver. So also I want to apologize. If you hear the reefer running, I am on a load. And that reefer is running because I have to pre-cool the trailer as I'm about to pick up a load. So I do apologize for that, hum. But like I said, it's a trucking podcast. They'll get used to the sounds. And um, I'm about to get into my diva moment. I'll see y'all in about a month. Y'all have a good one. I am in uh, currently in Arizona. And one thing I noticed, I just woke up. <laughs> I'm driving. Um, I woke up at a casino that has truck parking. One thing that's frustrating out here is I understand there's very limited parking for truckers. I completely understand that aspect and I respect it. The problem that I have is when it comes to shutting down, it's like, I know we're on a clock. I know we have to hurry up and shut down. But my thing is, why do truck drivers feel like they're the only one, like certain truck drivers feel like they, they don't, they're the only ones that matter? Like, you block people in and don't care. It's like, we don't have courtesy to each other. And if we don't have courtesy to each other, how do we expect anybody else to have courtesy or respect for each other? For us, I mean. Um, it's frustrating. Luckily, I always try to make sure I park to leave myself an out. Uh, I do. I try to make sure I always park to leave myself an out. The frustrating part is even when I leave myself out, I feel like someone's going to take that little space that I do leave myself out for. Luckily, it didn't block me in this time. 
but it did make it difficult still to get out of the truck stop or the parking area. Like I really had to do some, I had to do some maneuvering. I had to really, I really had to learn how to spot openings to get out because people will park in the craziest ways. I've learned to also, if I can, if it's safe, I will also get out and walk to the restroom. And on the way to the restroom, I try to spot maybe some outs. Or when I'm coming back, I'll probably try to spot some outs that I can go to. The frustrating part is that there's been a couple of times where I've been blocked in, wasn't able to get out enough. And I hate having to wake up a truck driver to ask them to move forward or backward so that I can get out the space. Because I understand our sleep is, you know, it's important. You hate getting woken up because then it's like your adrenaline is going. So because you're like, who, why is somebody waking me up? Is it the police? Is it, you know, did something happen? Is there a fire or something? You know, you don't know what it is. You just know you're being, someone's knocking on your door and you're waking up. So I hate waking people up because I know when I get woken up out of my sleep when I'm out here. It's hard for me to go back to sleep sometimes. So I understand the con- like the need and the concept of important of an uninterrupted sleep. I really hate having to wake drivers up. I know sometimes it, it, you can't help it, especially if the road shut down and you have no choice, nowhere to go. But that's where like trip planning comes into play. Like if you plan properly, you know you'll know exactly where you shut down. You have these truckers that will like run their clocks down to the very end and have no choice but to shut down, like, you know, force shut down. Sometimes they shut down on the side of the road or, you know, shut down in places that they're not really supposed to because they have no clock left. I don't understand how, why trip planning isn't part of the CDL test. I feel that that's a very important aspect of trucking. And I'm like, oh, that's stupid to put trip planning on a CDL test. Not really. When they put other stuff on there, it's just like really stuff that has like stuff that really we don't need to know. But they, you know, um, they have stuff on there, so why not? Information is knowledge. Knowledge is power. So, um, any, the more information you have going behind before you get behind the wheel, to me, is the better. So, but yeah, so it, it's a little frustrating when. Um, you pl- I plan my day. I plan to shut down, you know, certain times. I Yesterday, I got shut down due to wind, so did not get as far as I wanted to. So I ended up shutting down there. So I wasn't even planning on shutting down there myself. So I understand why there was a lot of trucks there. But I also feel like a lot of these places that do have some, I mean, there's lines, there's, par- there's parking lines. But they're not very clear and not very, you're not able to see them, especially at night. So I feel in those times there should be like security, parking lot security. Make, excuse me. I feel in those type of places there should be parking lot security there to make sure that people are parking correctly, parking um, in a way that's not blocking other people in. The reason why I say that is because in case of an emergency, how are we all supposed to get out? In an orderly fashion, it won't happen. You got everybody parked every which way. Like there should be like organized parking. Just like when you come to an event, you tell them this is where you're gonna park at. This is where you're gonna park, and you have people there organizing that. Like that should be something in these places that are just like wide open parking spaces, even just regular parking parking lots and parking structures and stuff like that. Like when yours, um certain situations I think you should have parking staff I think all truck stops should have just parking staff in general especially the truck stops that have like reserve parking and uh you don't have um your reserve parking when you get there if you paid for it or you use your points or whatever to get a parking space and then you don't have it um some places enforce it some places don't so it's like well where am I supposed to park now I I did I did my due diligence. I, I planned ahead to get reserved parking, and now I get here, and it's not available, and you're telling me that you can't do anything about it? Well, what's the purpose of me getting 
reserve parking if you can't do anything about it. So that's another frustrating issue out here we're dealing with. Um, I just wish that there was more mandates for truck parking. I mean, we're big vehicles. We can't park everywhere. Um, we have certain areas that we can and can't park. We need easily accessible. We need it to be large. Um, we need to at least have restroom facilities. If you're not going to be open 24-7, have actual restroom facilities at least so that we can access like a rest area does. Um, don't give us porta potties. We're not animals and we should be treated, you know, better than prisoners do. Prisoners get restrooms. They actually get restroom facilities. So um, why can't we? So that's just another little thing that irks me out here on the road but the main thing is as drivers we need to have respect for each other at least from you know from each other because it's hard enough out here trying to get respect of everybody else uh, our job is stressful enough but we shouldn't try to make it more stressful for for each other we should have to help each other and if you have to get woken up in the middle of the night just know it's probably because you parked somewhere stupid. What's your 20 people? Have a good day.